In recent days, Turkey has, alongside their proxy army of Free Syrian Army, launched several attacks towards Rojava, some attacks towards the Kurdish city of Kobani. In recent years, Kobani has faced a lot of war. For a future video, we will talk about the present Turkish offensive towards it. But today, let's go back a few years and talk about the early Kobani war, when Rojava fought against the Islamic State. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and the ringing bell in order not to miss any of our future videos. Now without further ado, let's go into the video. After the 2011 protest of Syria, a part of the whole Arab Spring, the Syrian president Assad, who faced both protesters but also armed insurgency, such as the early Free Syrian Army, retreated his troops from Rojava to defend the capital city of Damascus. Kurds saw their chance and retook part of Syrian occupied Kurdistan and YPG, the People's Protection Unit, established themselves in some cities of Rojava, one of them being Kobani. At the same time, a terrible organization called the Islamic State was spreading from the south. These terrorists would most certainly put YPG and the Kurdish people of Rojava under test and in August 2013, the Islamic State gradually started to attack Kurdish controlled areas around Kobani. However, it was a few months later that the real offensive started. The Islamic State advanced towards Kobani and in a smaller matter of time, the Islamic State captured Sarin and other towns and villages around the city of Kobani. This trapped Kobani in a box with Turkey behind them and the Islamic State all around them. The offensive against the city itself started 15th of September 2014. The Islamic State used everything from tanks, rockets and artillery in the direction of Kobani. Simultaneously, as they were attacking Kobani, they had already occupied around 50 villages around the area within 24 hours. Everything was going their way. Over 60,000 people fled from Kobani into Turkey. A large number of these were not allowed in by Turkish authorities, and Turkey got a lot of criticism for this. They were Kurds. That was Turkey's only reason for not letting them in. Don't miss out our exclusive special episode video about the relation between Turkey and the Islamic State, where we expose Turkey with pure evidence of concrete cooperation in several aspects. The link are in the description below. In September 2014, 300 fighters from the PKK joined the fight with the YPG against the Islamic State. Until now, around 39 ISIL soldiers, 27 Kurdish fighters and 50 civilians had been killed. But this was only the beginning. 26th of September, ISIS troops captured a strategic hill previously used by the YPG to target ISIS fighters. As ISIS flag was seen around the hill, this surely worked as a symbolic morality boost for the ISIS fighter and the opposite reaction for the Kurdish forces. The world was quiet, at least until ISIS advanced towards Holir in the south and the execution of James Foley which triggered US to start bombing the terrorist organization. Even though a coalition started to attack ISIS, they still advanced in Kobani. Between 28th of September and 1st of October, about 150 Kurdish fighters from KRG arrived to Kobani to reinforce it. But this didn't stop ISIS. In the coming two or three days, the terrorists moved about three kilometers into the city. Until 4th of October, Kurdish forces which were surrounded and pushed back retreated into the city center and ISIS captured the last outskirt village of Kobani. For the Kurds, there were no way out now. According to reports from this time, ISIL had at least 4,000 fighters directly participating in the siege of Kobani. During the offensive from ISIS, every other offensive in other fronts had been stopped in order for the terrorists to focus on this particular one. ISIS now controlled 75% of the Kobani canton with the ambition to secure all of it as soon as possible. 
reports and rumors of refugees being tortured, raped and murdered and mutilated in the hands of ISIS circulated and men which were captured by ISIS were beheaded including Kurdish women who fought the Islamic State. The next day ISIS forces captured Kobani's southern and eastern entrances. By this point the city were empty of civilians which all had fled towards Turkey either making it past the border or not. The following day in the battle of Mishtanur hill Arin Mirkan became martyr as the female YPG fighter broke into a ISIS stronghold, set off a grenade underneath a tank and killed herself alongside numerous ISIS fighters. The incident marked the first known case of a Kurdish fighter carrying out a suicide attack. Eventually ISIS captured the hill and could now enter the city. This was the first time the terrorists entered the city itself. The terrorists were backed up by snipers, heavy machine gun fire and shelling from Mistanur Hill. ISIS pushed forward and gathered more and more troops, now reaching 9000 terrorists in the Kobani offensive. But YPG was no easy target. In one ambush as ISIS entered Street 48, YPG killed 20 jihadists at one time, making them retreat back to the closest checkpoint. But still, ISIS still advanced and could soon secure the city hospital and the Kurdish police headquarters on the western part of the city. Suicide trucks were used in both cases. The Kurds also managed to kill 11 fighters and capture 4 of them. But at this point, the Kurdish forces stood with the risk of running out of ammunition. ISIS now controlled around 50% of the city. In several cases, ISIS forces infiltrated Kurdish lines by holding up YPG flags and wearing YPG uniforms as they approached Kurdish front lines. This also misled coalition airstrikes which couldn't differentiate between ISIS forces and YPG forces. Between 13th and 17th of October, the international coalition performed over 60 airstrikes, killing at least 50 ISIS fighters. The Kurdish fighters advanced and claimed retaking control over certain important areas. However, this would soon change as ISIL answered back. In 27th of October, ISIL released a propaganda video showing British hosted John Cantline. In this video, ISIL claimed to control most of Kobani city. The beginning of November was recognized as a turnaround in the war against ISIS as YPG instead of losing ground started to regain it. Around 8th of November YPG advanced in several parts of Kobani. Two days later ISIS called for reinforcement from other parts of Aleppo government to participate in the fight for Kobani due to heavy casualties from the battles. In 12th of November YPG cut off a road outside of Kobani which worked as a supply route by ISIL. The road connected Kobani with Raqqa, the former capital of ISIS. Between 16th and 20th of November ISIS lost several checkpoints, retreated several attacks, lost over 35 fighters including two high ranking commanders named Abu Ali Al Askari and Abu Muhammad Al Masri. Until 25th of November YPG recaptured both the cultural center but also the governmental square and the whole east of Azadi Yard. ISIL responded by launching several counter-attacks, detonating four suicide cars and explosive belts. In the upcoming clashes YPG lost 8 fighters while ISIS lost 17 fighters. 29th of November was the bloodiest day in the Battle of Kobani as 50 ISIS fighters, 12 FSA, 11 YPG and 3 unknown pro-Kurdish fighters were killed. Heavy clashes continued between YPG and ISIS all the way into the next year. 1st of January 2015 YPG recaptured the city library and the Botan area south of Kobani, ending up with controlling 70% of the city. In all of this, ISIS commander Sheikh Osman al Nazeh also were killed. ISIS answered with counterattacks, but YPG repelled every one of them, in one case, killing 47 fighters without losing one single fighter. Between 19th and 21th of January, YPG fully retook Mistanur Hill, 
south of Kobani, pushing ISIS out of the edge of the city. On 21th of January, Peshmerga lost their first fighter in the Battle of Kobani. According to some rumors, ISIS now put underage soldiers on the front lines to fight YPG as many terrorists who was killed was recognized as under 18 years old. In 26th of January, YPG started the last cleanup of the city as they now claimed to have control of the whole city. However, it was also claimed that the battle wasn't over, that it was still ongoing at the outskirts of the city. In 27th of January, ISIS was officially defeated. YPG and FSA now started to advance on ISIS held villages. By 6th of February, YPG forces had recaptured over 100 villages in the Kobani Canton. The liberation of Kobani is worldwide known as a turnabout of the whole Islamic State, because since the victory in Kobani, YPG has only retaken more and more of the old caliphate ground. For weeks, YPG kept on retaking villages and checkpoints from ISIS in the area. In the middle of March 2015, ISIS started to reinforce neighboring Raqqa government to prevent YPG from advancing towards the capital city. By 7th of April, YPG had liberated 332 out of 350 villages in the area. By the end of April, the stationed Peshmerga units in Kobani returned to Iraqi-occupied Kurdistan since their presence no more was necessary. The Battle of Kobani was over, a battle which left the city in total ruins, a dead city destroyed and removed from its former presence. The Kurds instantly started to rebuild the city, but the city's future is still shaky, not least since NATO ally Turkey has started an offensive against Rojava, first by occupying Afrin in the west, and recently by targeting the rest of Rojava, including the city of Kobani. The city will most likely face more evil in the years to come, as Turkey and FSA aren't showing any mercy or understanding towards the democratic equality and freedom that's rising in Rojava.